Hello there and welcome to What's the Point? A question we should all be asking ourselves and the podcast by brand architect Bill Ellis that will help you discover, clarify and live your purpose. So hello everybody and welcome to this episode of What's the Point? And I have a guest today. When when I started this podcast, I said there were going to be some people that you hadn't heard of and some companies that you hadn't heard of, but that you need to. And this is certainly one. My guest today is Amanda Thompson. She is the Chief of Culture of Student Made Incorporated. Hi, Amanda, welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, it's good to have you here. So um, there is so much interesting about today's show and today's guest, and it's a perfect example of why I strive to find uh, some people that may not be in the limelight, although the founder of Student Made Incorporated is. If you're familiar with that company, then you certainly know the founder, Kristen Hadid. If you're not familiar with Student Made, you still may know Kristen because she's gotten quite a high profile since I, not because of me, but uh, since, since I first wrote about her three years ago as one of my Friday's Fearless Brands. You may be familiar with her book, Permission to Screw Up, and this is something that we're not going to talk about today, not directly. Uh, and we're not going to talk a lot about Kristen other than to get a, a, the context of the company. So, Amanda, what I want to do is learn a little bit about you and learn a little bit about how you got involved in this company and what your role is today, because there's so much here. So with that, let me start with kind of a, the, an obvious first question. Help us understand the, the position chief of culture. Yeah, so I have been with Student Made for five years. Um, I'm the only person on the team who actually hasn't cleaned for the company. They wanted to hire somebody with outside experience, a completely different background. The other people started from cleaning and, and, and worked their way up. So I, I just accidentally found this job on Craigslist. They were looking for somebody to answer the phones. I was looking for a huge career change. I actually used to be a professional archer and coached archery and I, I loved coaching, but I, I had been in that for so long. I just wanted something different. So I found it. I thought it was too good to be true. I got the phone call for the interview and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a real interview. Can we start over? <laughs> let's, let's start the phone call over. And I just instantly fell in love with the culture. You could just tell that student made was something different. I mean, it is a cleaning company, but we provide so much more for our students. We're building the next generation of leaders. And I started off answering phones, I fell in love. I kept growing into the company and I, I became the head of operations. I was living in Florida at the time, running day-to-day -day operations. And at Student Made, we're all about each person being in their wheelhouse and, you know, not doing just what you love, but doing what you're great at. And one of the things that is my wheelhouse is teaching and coaching and, and developing. And we have many workshops at Student Made and, um, you know, just different things, which is, I guess, a different topic. But um, I, that's where I need to be. I need to be teaching. So with that, I also wanted to move home where I'm from the Northwest and I'm not from Florida and I, I didn't want to leave student made. And so I said to the company, I don't want to go. How can we make this work? And Kristen, the best boss ever was like, we don't want to lose you. Let's, let's figure out what, how can we make this work? So this is where we came up with our ambassador program. How cool is it? to say, hey, we actually have students running an entire company. That's crazy, but yeah. I think we can make it happen. And that's how our, our program was was bloomed from, from that. So I, I basically manage students who learn how to run a company. They run in terms and um, they get to graduate with, a, with an awesome resume. They can say that they actually, um, you know, they worked in a business, they have the experience. So I, I do that remotely from Washington State. And as chief of culture, you know, I, I have to constantly keep my eye on the pulse of the business. Um, 
when it comes to how how our team members are feeling. I mean, culture is a feeling. I need to make sure that they're all feeling loved, taken care of, appreciated, valued. And at the same time, coaching our team members through challenges and, you know, hard things that you learn in just the day-to-day business, but at the same time, personal. And it kind of comes and goes with whatever's happening in the world, like 2020, which sucks. <laughs> COVID has yeah. been very challenging yeah, year, but a, yeah. So that's, that's my role, a chief of culture. Okay. Yeah, 2020 <laughs> is certainly a unique year uh, for all of us. And, you know, it, it would be fair for the listeners for me to take a quick step back and uh, I probably should have done this to start. While the focus isn't on Kristen and, and her book per se, it is on the company she founded. And I'll give just a very brief history of the company and you can jump in and augment it because I'm sure you know it better than I. But Kristen was a student at the University of Florida. Kristen mm-hmm. was like most students uh, way back to when I was a student in need of money. And she found that she could make money by doing uh, cleaning of, mm-hmm. of apartments and, and uh, other residences. And it, it occurred to her that she could not just do this to make pocket money, but she could actually create a business out of this because she knew other students that also needed money. And she then created this business and called it Student Made. Um, she learned from the ground up And that's why her book is called Permission to Screw Up, because she'll be the first to admit that she made multiple mistakes. But (laughs) the other thing that's important, and and this will get right back, uh, Amanda, to to the culture, the the permission to screw up is is valuable. It's, It's invaluable. But what Kristen has learned and shares when she speaks, um, failure and mistakes are a path to success. So having a boss, a company owner that has the attitude, we know you're going to screw up Mm -hmm. because everyone does. And that's okay as long as you learn and as long as we advance as a result of that. And that leads into the culture of the company that you're in charge of uh, so, so speak to us a little bit more about the culture itself, uh, and then we can get back maybe into a little bit more of a deep dive of how you help facilitate that culture throughout the, the employees. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of businesses out there that, like you said, don't have the space to fail. And that's what we've really created at Student Made. I mean, we hire only young adults. A lot of them, this is their very first job and they're going to make mistakes. And we have, you know, we've set it up to where when they do, we can just have a conversation about it. And I can say, hey, you know, this is, how do you think you did? (laughs) This is how it could have been better. This is how we can improve. So that way when they leave student made, which they will, I mean, we have it set up to where it's not a long-term thing. It's a a short part of their life, um, you know, while they're in school. Um, they they can go on to their next job or their next venture, whatever it is, and say, you know, I worked for a company that gave me the space to fail. They taught me how I can be better and um, cause unfortunately in a lot of jobs you fail, you get fired or you, you fail and it's, it's done, it's over with. So that's when Kristen started the company. That's why she fell in love. Cause she realized that there wasn't that opportunity for a lot of young adults and it's accidentally happened while cleaning toilets and, and, you know, houses, but um, she was, became very passionate about that part and the teaching part of it. And so she turned down a, you know, a very nice high paying salary job in New York city in finances to run a little cleaning company out of Gainesville, Florida. (laughs) Yeah. And and that's part of the magic behind student made and, and part of the, the uh, magic of, of Kristen that she has shared with the rest of uh, you and, and all of the other employees, current and past. And here's what's really cool, future. Um, so yeah, I, when, when part, when it's more than cleaning houses, cleaning businesses, cleaning toilets, and believe me, there's a lot of good you can learn from cleaning toilets, I know. Um, 
but looking at it from a bigger picture of this is going to be a business experience that you can carry forward into your life. This is going to be a learning platform for you to make money in the short term. That's what you need to help you hone your skills and to help you uh, clarify what your purpose is and to start to find your passion. So all of that is is in evidence at this company as I see it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, if if the world is seeing that, then that means we're doing a good job portraying what we're doing. And, you know, it's, you know, we have systems set up to check ourselves too. Are we continually doing this? This is this is the purpose behind our company, our why. Um, we build just the next generation. And I I am very grateful for working for a company that does do that. And you know, I, I love the students who come in and, and seeing them grow and become better versions of themselves. It's pretty yeah. it's pretty awesome. So you say it's um it's not, if people outside are noticing what you're doing, that's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that uh, I had you on because uh, the more we can bring to the philosophy of the company, the mm -hmm. philosophy that um, developing people and helping guide them to become better versions of themselves is a profitable way to run a business. And it's a long-term strategy and, and, and so for me, um, having that turnover is not a negative. Having that turnover can be nothing but a positive because you're bringing in people that are uh, perhaps more eager or, or more strapped for the cash and, and ready to learn, but they've also seen other people that have advanced. So that's why I wanted to have uh, you and student made on, on the show. Now, we talked about 2020 being a bit odd, and we talked about you no longer being in Florida, where the company is based in Gainesville, yes? Mm -hmm. um, and many of the employees are from the University of Florida, probably about half, if I remember. Um, it kind of ebbs and flows. I mean, we have a lot <laughs> UF, Santa Fe, online. We, we yeah. get some high school students occasionally. Um, there's, a fun, there's a couple... Um, trade schools in, in Florida. And then we, in the last couple of years, we've been a little bit lax because there's some people who are kind of in that, you know, in between, maybe between school and what they want to uh -huh. do next, but they're in that same phase. So we have yeah. some that are in, currently in school. Yeah. And, and so I, I brought that up because you're now back in Washington state. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a whole new dynamic for all of us, but in particular for a company like Student Made, whose primary work product is cleaning physical locations. Mm -hmm. And we're recording this in the midst of the pandemic, um, which has gone on longer than I think any one of us had anticipated. But it, it brings up a lot of questions are how are you uh, responding, what kind of impact has the pandemic had in two areas? First, on people that want and need their place cleaned, and particularly with a lot of students being you know, sent home or going home or virtual learning, but also from the other side, the supply of employees from students going home or, or not being there. So how has that impacted you? How are you dealing with that? You know, I think a lot of business owners and leaders and company are going through the same thing that we are going through and have all year. You know, it's been very unsure what's happening, what's going to happen next. And um, if anybody that's listening isn't familiar with Student Made or Kristen, we, we actually have kind of two parts of the business. So we have a cleaning company and then there's Kristen Hadid LLC and she wrote the book and she's off in the world basically telling people how to treat their people. And then at Student Made, we're, we're doing what she's talking about, the how, the how to do it right. and walking our talk. So we wouldn't have maybe been even been able to keep our doors open if it wasn't for Kristen's side of the business. Um, she 
really buckled down was like, okay, let's use this as an opportunity and, you know, talk to people, other businesses of like, Hey, you know, during a scary time, this is how you take care of your people. And and she was able to do that. But we decided to close student made at the beginning of the pandemic, because our team members were like, we're going into people's homes. This is scary. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't even, a lot of our students don't even live in Gainesville. They may be are there just for school. Mm-hmm. So we shut down for a while and it was really scary, but our team members felt loved and supported and they weren't just numbers. We actually were meeting weekly and saying, how are you feeling? And, you know, everyone was scared and we just kind of took it one week at a time. Um, I know every state's different, but when as Florida was opening back up, you know, we just made sure to continually check in with our team members and say, you know, it's not going to look like it used to for a long time. Just mm-hmm. tell us how you're feeling. And some team members didn't want to clean and we were okay with that. We weren't going to fire them for not wanting to go into people's homes. But then there was other team members who were like, no, send me in. And this is a good time to sanitize and, you know, take care of some of our clients who really need people helping them maybe with disabilities or um, they're just not able to, to clean for whatever reason. So it's not the same, but I don't know what company is the same right now (laughs) with with COVID and that's okay. As long as, you know, again, we're just checking in with them, seeing how they're feeling. We have the PPE and extra protection and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I guess in a way cleaning kind of boomed for a lot of companies because people need to have things sanitized for COVID. So. And, and I think there's a, a an important point coming out of the comments you just made, which is uh, even when Student Maid was 100% open and active, it wasn't all uh, cleaning of dormitories. It was uh, cleaning in the public and cleaning in residences, perhaps uh, not students, but uh, you know, Florida certainly has its share of retirees and people that can use help, but also probably at and depending on the time frame, you're kind of split equally at times between residential and commercial. So there's there's a lot of impact that you guys had to juggle. So as you talk, um, what comes to mind is a company headquartered here where I am in St. Louis, Barry Waymiller, and its CEO, Bob Chapman. And I know that Kristen's familiar with them and they're familiar with Kristen. And together they know Simon Sinek, who... Uh, Kristen uh, shares a stage with quite often. But the, the thing that, that really starts to come out is Barry Waymiller is a global manufacturing concern. Student Made is a relatively small business in, for the most part, one city in Florida. But the same approach of value your people, enrich them, take from them their best contribution to the company so that they are providing value and feeling valued and you'll make money and have a good solid company. And I think that's a message that really has to start to spread more than it has. You know, my career has been in branding uh, from consumer products for a lot of years uh, to uh, personal branding and, and uh, brand strategy and, and helping people develop their brand. And where I focus is that most companies overlook what is to me the single most important aspect of a company brand and that's its people. And to have someone who is a chief of culture, to have someone uh, like Bob Chapman at Barry Waymiller whose philosophy is everybody matters is a is a business philosophy that's going to and needs to take hold and will take hold hopefully sooner rather than later i love so, barry Wee miller they're so great that's something that we teach yeah. in one of our workshops is a little story about Bay, barry Wee, yeah. uh, barry Wee miller yeah. how he had this idea of you know the, the the board came to him one day and said hey we're gonna have to let go a lot of people and he was like absolutely not mm-hmm. what can we do and so he he went to all of his people and said hey this is what is going on financially 
Um, and some people, like if we just had everybody take two weeks off unpaid, we'd be able to stay afloat. And his whole people rallied together. And some of them are like, you know what, you know, because of my significant other, I can actually give some of my time off to people who can't take the time off. And everybody was taken care of. We've actually did that during our the beginning of the pandemic. We wanted to make sure everybody was still paid. And so we modeled what Barry, Barry Way Miller mm-hmm. did and said, hey, we have yeah. this amount of money we want to make sure everybody gets paid and certain team members were like you know what I still live at home I don't I don't need this my parents are still taking care of me I want to give my money put it back in the pot and give it to the team members who you know are supporting themselves financially and we we really rallied together in the beginning and again because of Barry you know and that perfect example uh they felt taken care of and we were able to get through that hard part in the beginning so and that, a great that's story. a great example, and thank you for sharing it. Um, and and a a quick plug for uh, Barry Waymiller, which, by the way, for those of you that aren't familiar, is the name of a company and not the name of an individual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the CEO is Bob Chapman. Bob Chapman. His book is Everybody Matters. <laughs> And that's something that uh, uh, Bob is on my list to have on the show. Uh, so Ooh, I'm also looking so at good. people that people have heard of. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's pretty amazing. And you know, his approach, and you talked about the workshops that, that Student Made does. Um, Barry Waymiller, through uh, a, a subsidiary called Chapman and Company, does uh webinars and seminars uh some free online some not free and and tremendous value either way but they were in a great position to help professionals businesses and and individuals understand as this pandemic came about there's a way to get through it without just firing everybody won't work in every case but a a lot of people engaged it so that's powerful and that kind of culture being being synthesized throughout a small company again it works but here's what i think is great and i know you're going to agree with this and i know it's part of Kristen's uh, uh motivation and hello kitty uh, <laughs> they like to join any yeah. of my meetings <laughs> cats, cats, love, cats love zoom for some reason <laughs> but anyway um is is the ripple effect of having that mentality and that philosophy uh, not drilled into, but employees exposed to that so that when they move on, they can take it with them and that's spreading and then spreading and then spreading. And, and that's how we're going to get uh, people to better understand that the company brand is made up of its people. And we have to get people to accept that, the leadership. Um, 100%. <laughs> so you had a somewhat interesting path to your current position as a professional archer and a coach in an archery company. And I'm assuming that when you interviewed with Kristen and her team, you said, I'm here to keep your company on point. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, uh, but... Tell me about that transition from from archery to to uh, being in charge of culture. Yeah, I I started archery when I was ten, and um, I quickly excelled at it and started competing nationally and internationally and made some world teams. And I had the opportunity to live at the Olympic Training Center in San Diego oh, wow. um, okay. under our head coach, and I long story short, I didn't love archery. I just was good at it. And, you know, when you get to a certain level, you have to love it. But I was passionate about teaching. And so I stepped away for a while. And I actually became a preschool teacher and, you know, just trying to find my passion. And there was always teaching behind it. Well, I I had ended up in Florida, I was coaching archery at one of this Easton sports facility there outside of Gainesville and um, just for whatever reason started looking for jobs like I said I'd accidentally found student made and it just sounded too good to be true I thought it was just kind of a fake thing on Craigslist but I still applied I'd never heard of student made before and um, just the interview like they I basically 
I, I'd never been in an interview before where they were like, interview us. Are we a good fit for you? You know, mm-hmm. I, I thought that that was so great. And I saw the stuff that they were doing for the students and the opportunities that I was going to be able to have to coach and make it my own. And um, I dropped everything archery and full work student student made. I, I was just all head in. It didn't pay very well. Um, but I didn't care. I'd, I'd rather be in something that I love wow. and I no regrets, no regrets there. So that's how it started. It was just a complete mm-hmm. swap just because, you know, sometimes when you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so the reason this podcast exists is my commitment to what I call the purpose principle which is the fact that to really be successful, and by that I mean not just financially successful, but happy with our lives and uh, uh, comfortable with what we do and achieving the goals that we want, we have to find out what our purpose is. So people, a lot of folks say, find your passion and you'll never work a day in your life. And I have to disagree with that. It's not a matter of finding your passion. It's a matter of finding out where you can apply that passion, what your purpose is. So as I hear your story, my take on it is you're passionate about coaching and helping and teaching. Um, and you were doing that, but not in an area where you are where you had a purpose. You, you didn't feel like the purpose was fulfilling. So the, the purpose principle very quickly is you have to understand Uh, define, clarify, and live your purpose. You have to fuel it with passion and you have to sustain it through persistence. And and that is why this whole um, podcast does exist. So that's a great example of it because our purpose evolves and it's not just, oh, I want to do this and you go out and do it. Or I, you know, my, my people that say, Oh, I love golf. I'm going to go be a golfer. Well, you can love golf, but the playing golf probably isn't your real purpose, or at least one you're going to be successful at. So uh, in, in the culture of student made, um, how do you help the employees start to gain more clarity as to what their purpose is? So I, I get the opportunity to just build relationships with them from the very beginning. Um, The first time our students meet me is in their second interview. And it's not your typical interview. The first interview is because they were a yes with one of our student ambassadors interviewing them. And I get to talk to them about, you know, what do you want to get out of this job? And how can I hold you accountable to it? What can I follow up with you on later in your job to make sure that you're on track to becoming a better version of yourself like what are your goals why are you here stuff like that and I can get to know them on a deeper level in that way so building that relationship from the very beginning of of who they are and Mm -hmm. or maybe just where they're at I guess in life because that's kind of a hard deep question but you know I get to continually check in with them about that and Um, hold them accountable to that. So I get a lot of, um, you know, people struggle with time management or trying to not people please. You get a lot of this age group, you know, millennials and younger, their parents wanting them to be somebody or being in a certain degree because they have to make money and they're just not happy. They're trying to find their why in life. So I can just use the steps of listening, listening to them and Um, encourage them to continue in that direction because I think sometimes it's easy to say oh I heard you say this you should be this and then you're putting that in their ear and pushing them I don't want to push them I want to be their coach on the sidelines being like hey you're going in the right direction or hey you said you wanted to do this but you're not even trying like I get I get to do that a lot in my role um that's one example <laughs> that okay. I get to do. Uh, I can just keep talking about it because I love it. So I don't know if you have any other questions. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it's fantastic. And, and to simplify it from my perspective anyway, and, and, and correct me and add, um, helping people to find uh, insight and accountability uh, without giving them the answers, but 
giving them encouragement, giving them insight and holding them accountable is what's truly valuable uh, in, in the area of coaching, I think. It, and, and what I hear you saying reinforces that. No, most definitely. Um, you know, we get some team members that maybe aren't, aren't a good fit, you know, or maybe they aren't at the period in their life that they are wanting to better themselves and, and maybe they don't last. That's okay. You know, at least they tried or they came in and they were given that opportunity. But, you know, the team members that do really shine at student made are the ones that are just continually moving forward. You know, mm -hmm. they're trying, just try. Yeah. That's, that's all I yeah. want our, our students to do is, is continue to try and, you know, everybody goes at different paces too. I can't compare all of our students. Like we might have somebody that comes in and they're constantly switching their majors or they're, you know, they're bouncing around, but they're, they're trying, but then we have other people that they latch onto something and, and they're pushing forward and they're, they're growing in the company and they're growing in whatever they're doing in their life. And that's great too, but no one's better than the other. So yeah. um, I love the, the mix of what we get in our, in our company, but our business model, you know, we, I, like I had said earlier, isn't for people to come in and just stay at student made. It's a stepping stone. Yeah. It's just a, 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 a stop in their life. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's a developmental stage, which I think yeah. is fabulous. Um, I've, I've actually had to kick team members out, which sounds kind of silly, yeah. but we've had people who've been with us for three to five years. And I'm like, Hey, like, it's time for you to move on. I think yeah. you're just maybe hesitant for whatever reason. And when that's a, you know, maybe a deeper yeah. conversation with them, but I'm like, I think it's time for you to actually leave student yeah, I think that's for the episode the that we'll call failure to launch. Um, <laughs> so we've covered a lot of things today. Uh, we've, we've talked about your purpose and we've talked about Kristen and the company and how it's founded and uh, a, a much younger generation and how they're looking and viewing at the workforce. So with all of that said, here's a question for you. What's the point? <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, we should have another podcast on just the, the my, my views on this. You know, I think we're all human. Humans are not perfect. And we should all create, a, like if you're a leader in a company, you own a business or you're, you're in a position where you're working with people, you should give them the, the space to be human and not perfect. I guess that's that I had to keep it short and sweet. <laughs> well, that is a fantastic answer. And I am in complete agreement with you. And maybe we will have another conversation <laughs> about what's the point. But, but that's the name of this podcast because... To me, it's a question that can't be asked too often. Um, if someone comes to you as an employee and says, well, I want to work here because this is my goal. Okay, that's great. What's the point of doing that? Well, because I want to make money. Great. What's the point of making money? And, you know, and it, it can continue. So uh, thank you for answering it so, so well and so succinctly. My guest, Amanda Thompson from Student Made, the Chief of Culture, a, a title that I love. How can people get in touch with you and or student made and or even that that uh, uh, always traveling and interesting Kristen Hadid? <laughs> yes. So it kind of just depends on maybe what you're what you're looking for. If you need a cleaning in Gainesville, contact us uh, contact at studentmade.com. My personal email is Amanda at studentmade.com and Kristen is Kristen at studentmate.com. But Kristen, if you're ever looking for um, a keynote, a speaker, somebody to do a workshop with you and your company, um, you can reach her through her website. And she has a lot of blog posts and she does so many great things. Um, and then if you're something that we're looking for on our end is we, um, for, for me, like I love working with young adults. So if you're ever wanting a coach, a life coach or anything like that, or just a, a conversation, you can always reach out to me and we'll figure out what you need <laughs> and we can go yeah. from there. But follow us on Instagram, Student Made. You can also follow Kristen, Kristen Hadid. Uh, we, we would love your support and just follow our story. 
Well, thanks. And that's a very generous offer of you to, to tell people that if you have an interest, get in touch with Amanda at studentmade.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen Hadid's a good follow on Instagram and elsewhere. Amanda, thank you so much for your time and your insight and your perspective on how to make a company successful, even in the face of a pandemic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We can promise you'll gain value in every one. Rating and reviewing makes us more discoverable and helps others find out what's the point. And if you'd like to know more about Bill Ellis or contact him, please visit his website, www.brandingpillars.com. See you next time.